Hello there, my fellow noble pilots, and welcome to another video about the Imperial Knights. Today's episode is probably gonna be the last one concerning knight armor patterns, after which I will be moving on to the more famous Imperial Knight houses. I realize I haven't talked about the Knight's Armager yet, but since there isn't enough lore to fill a whole episode with them, I'll probably include them in a video about something else. As far as today is concerned, we are gonna talk about the knight patterns known as the Valiant and the Warden. I am your host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Knight Valiant is a super heavy Imperial Walker, making use of the Dominus class chassis and possessing a dual plasma core to empower its many weapon systems. It is used primarily as a close combat assault walker. Although slower than other knights, this pattern benefits from substantially increased firepower and much thicker armor than its smaller counterparts. The Knight Valiant defeats its enemies through the simple principle of applying overwhelming firepower at close proximity. Marching relentlessly into the fight, gunfire scattering uselessly from its iron shield, the Valiant unleashes such devastating punishment against its targets in so short a span of time that they can neither fight back nor endure. Even a single Knight Valiant can break the back of an unrushing enemy horde, or shatter the center of a foe's battle line like a battering ram smashing through a fortress gate. When an entire lance of these fearsome war engines strides into battle, they can snap apart an enemy army like matchwood. The Knight Valiant's primary armaments are its conflagration cannon and thunder coil harpoon. The former is a magnificently unsubtle weapon comprising three enormous night-grade flamers linked together and fed from armored Promethium reservoirs. When triggered, the conflagration cannon spews forth an inescapable firestorm that washes over everything in range and reduces all to blackened ash. So does the Night Valiant burn the Emperor's enemies as the worthless heretics they are. The Thunder Coil Harpoon is a rather more unusual weapon, a huge spear of adamantium fitted with pneumatic grapnels and attached by thick chains to an electrophomic generator, allowing it to be fired and then reeled back again and again. Not only does its impaling mass gouge massive wounds in larger targets while crushing smaller victims outright, but once the harpoon has hit home, the noble pilot can trigger the generator and send a massive electrical charge through the chain. Arching electrogeists leap from the harpoon, cooking monstrous beasts from the inside out and overloading the circuitry and power supplies of enemy war machines. Combined with the pummeling fire of its twin-linked siegebreaker cannons and the inescapable detonations of its shieldbreaker missiles, it is not hard to see how many enemy forces soon disintegrate when the Valiant turns its wrath upon them. Those few who hold their ground often earn a salute of respect from the Knight Valiant's pilot, before its next bombardment annihilates them utterly. The full war gear of a Knight Valiant includes the Conflagration Cannon, the Thunder Coil Harpoon, twin-linked Siegebreaker Cannons, two twin-linked Melta Guns, four Shieldbreaker Missiles, or two Shieldbreaker Missiles, and one additional pair of twin-linked Siegebreaker Cannons, and the Ion Shield. A couple of famous Knights Valiant include the Adamant Wrath. The Knight Valiant Adamant Wrath is piloted by Sir Mercutane of House Terran. The stern Sir Mercutane is as unyielding as the gates of an armored fortress. He is fortified in mind and body and soul by his unshakable faith in the Emperor, and would gladly give his life in defense of the Imperium. Of course, Mercutane's enemies would not find that life easy to take, though especially while he sits within the indomitable Knight Valiant known as Adamant Wrath. 
This Dominus class war engine is infamously stubborn, its machine spirit refusing to yield no matter how much damage it suffers. At Gallows Ridge, Adam and Raph absorb the fire of an entire renegade artillery company, weathering their punishing salvos long enough to annihilate them with its own weaponry. Such a pairing of resolute noble and stalwart knight has only served to magnify the strength of both, and Adam and Raph is currently known as House Terran's most unshakable defender. The Bane of Iron Lady Natanya pilots the immense knight valiant known as the Bane of Iron, whose machine spirit is among the most aggressive of all the House Griffith's hunting states. Natanya herself is strong-willed and courageous, the only noble ever to fully break the unruly Bane of Iron to their command. Natanya has harnessed the war engine's natural ferocity and destructive power, and now specializes in providing devastating close-range fire support to her comrades in the field. Griffith's fine tradition of monster hunting has found a worthy proponent in Lady Natanya, who excels in obliterating the demon engines of the heretic Astartes. She was among the knights seconded to Robut Gilliman's Indomitus Crusade, and soon proved her valor by protecting her Ultramarine's allies with her knight's crackling ion shield, while annihilating heretical war machines one after another with pinpoint fire. Natanya has shared an honor bond with the Sons of Ultramar ever since. The Knight Warden Before I begin on this, I feel I should let you know that some aspects concerning this knight's lore and background are no longer canon, because they've been reworked or removed in the newer Imperial Knight Codex. But I still wanted to talk about it because I did find some rather nice pictures of it. The Knight Warden is a pattern of Questoris-class Imperial Knight that excels at storming strongholds and battles in claustrophobic areas like urban confines. Undaunted in the face of enemy fire, they often mastermind attacks on enemy barricades and bunkers. With its ion shield at a 4, the Night Warden can close upon a foe quickly, its immense strides simply bypassing tank barricades and easily maneuvering through narrow Hive City streets, a manufactorum, or among the twisted bows of an alien forest. On one arm, they carry an Avenger Gatling cannon, on the other, a Reaper Chainsword or a Thunderstrike Gauntlet. Both more than capable of ripping apart a tank, monstrous alien creature, or armored fortification to pieces. The Night Warden can be further equipped with a shoulder-mounted Meltagun and carapace-mounted support weapon. Should the Warden expect to encounter enemy tanks, the Storm Spear Rocket Pod is the ideal solution while the twin Icarus autocannons are perfect for dealing with aircraft. This combination of weapons renders them especially ferocious when engaging enemy war machines. With one swing, the Reaper Chainsword is more than capable of scything the head of a Tyranid Biohorror or running through the heaviest Tau Empire battlesuit. Meanwhile, a single good punch with its Thunderstrike Gauntlet is more than enough to kill almost anything smaller than a Titan, annihilating it in a searing flare and resonant boom. For forces of the Imperium pinned down by enemy infantry, there is only one sound more reassuring than the heavy thudding footfall of an incoming Imperial Knight. The whirring drone of the high-velocity Avenger Gatling Cannon sounds a distinctive message as do the telltale cracking explosions of its rapidly fired shots. Such noises let friend and foe alike know that the Night Warden has arrived. The highly feared Avenger Gatling Cannon is like an oversized assault cannon, though its larger caliber shells are more destructive and its rate of fire is even more prodigious. A single blazing volley from this rotary weapon can stitch a pattern of death across the foe's battle line causing charges to falter and fail, or destroying entire attack columns of light vehicles. In support of this already lethal weapon, the Avenger Gatling Cannon has a built-in heavy flamer to flush foes out of cover. 
Any enemies that get through the curtain of deadly fire laid down by a night warden must then seek to avoid the wide sweeping blows of its signature close combat weapon, the Reaper Chainsword. This massive chain toothed blade is typically used to destroy the largest of targets, slicing apart enemy tanks or delivering the killing blow to Titan class foes. It is this combination of mid-ranged firepower and close assault capability that makes the Night Warden such a formidable adversary and so popular among its allies. It is not uncommon for a Night Warden to bear a Thunderstrike Gauntlet in place of the murderous Reaper Chainsword, utilizing the energy crackling power of its prodigious blows to hammer apart even the mightiest of foes. The Avenger Lance Formation, made famous by House Terran, has been known to feature a trio of Knights Warden armed in such fashion, and House Volker employs several similar lances for bunker-busting besiegements. Upon realizing that they cannot match the might of an Imperial Knight, many of mankind's enemies will attempt to overrun the war engine with the weight of numbers, or probe around their more vulnerable flanks. It is against such tactics that the Warden truly comes into its own, thanks to the volume of firepower it can carry. Should fast foes like Tau Piranhas or Orc Buggies streak around a Knight Formation's flanks, they will find a Knight Warden a formidable obstacle. Tracking the oncoming foe, the Knight Warden will fire short bursts from its Avenger, quickly and efficiently turning such lightly armored vehicles into burning slag. And that, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Knight's Valiant and Knight's Warden for today. Are either of these two among your favorite knight patterns? Why do you like them? Let us know in the comments below. Also, if you guys have any favorite great house, you can also tell me in the comments below and I might cover that next. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more content. Thank you kindly for watching, and I wish you all an amazing day. The Emperor Protects.